<laughs> Welcome back. What? See that? That's the future of air transport. EV toll, pilotless air taxis. You can be safely whisked off the ground to somewhere else and maybe you'll get there, maybe you'll crash. We don't know. <laughs> I'm working on a video which will explain to people who have got more money than sense why they perhaps shouldn't be investing in this sort of thing just yet. The technology is not there and I think the only way that we as a community can protect the airspace we currently have access to is to let people know that you shouldn't be throwing your money in a bottomless pit like this until the technology is there and it just is not. Here's your proof. Here's your proof. Would you fly on one of those? I would not fly in one of those. Absolutely not. Now um, I've got my little $2 tablet with all my headlines written on here because it's news time. Yes it is. Let's see what we've got to talk about in the news. Well here's something that's interesting if you're into drone racing. Drone Racing League. You know, it was an ambitious thing set up by a group of people to to popularise and commercialise drone racing. And it looked like it was going to be a big thing back in the day when drone racing was going to be the next Formula One. Everyone said, oh, it's going to be the new Formula One. And we had guys like um, Chad Nowak from Final Glide travelling the world, you know, the drone racing circuits and things. Oh, it was brilliant. Everyone thought it was going to be great. And then reality set in and now we realise that drone racing and freestyle oh, is a very niche hobby. But, but this will knock your socks off if you haven't heard already. Drone Racing League has been sold. Yes, and guess how much it was sold for? Dollar? Two? No? Sit down, hold on to the edge of your chair. A quarter of a billion dollars. Seriously! Uh, a crowd called uh, what is it, Infinite Reality have bought Drone Racing League for 250,000, no, 250 million dollars, excuse me, quarter of a billion dollars. Oh my god, that's so much money! Hmm, someone knew what they were doing when they started that, didn't they? So, quarter of a billion dollars. It's maybe not as niche as we thought. <laughs> At least someone doesn't think so. Yeah, anyway, one of the reasons that there's been a bit of a gap since the last video is there hasn't been much news because of the headlines coming out of the Middle East with all the drone exchanges going on, that sort of um, took over the headlines. And if you search for drones in Google News, all you got was talk about Israel and and Iran and all the goings on there and I'm, I'm not going to cover that. That's not our hobby, that's not the drones we talk about. But um, yeah, it's, it's uh, meant that all the other drone stories just basically disappeared into the noise. So there wasn't a lot to talk about. But however, weeks later, things are picking up. There is more news. In fact, I've got a lot of things on my little tablet. And the next one is that um, Mr. Alejandro Otera, I think his name was, of Naples, Florida, Florida, yeah, Naples and Florida. Um, remember, he is the guy that had the piece of space station fall through his roof, <laughs> proving that falling space junk is more dangerous than recreational multiple rotor drones. Um, yeah, he had a visit from the NASA people and they said, yay, that's a piece of our space station, give it back. <laughs> and it turns out it wasn't a battery, it was a piece of Inconel. Now, Inconel is a very high temperature alloy with a lot of nickel and chrome and, and stuff in it, so it resists temperature really well. It's often used for things like combustion chambers and turbine blades and things like that, where it needs to be very resistant to heat. I would use it to make pulse jets, but it's so damn expensive. Anyway, NASA rolled up to Mr. Um, Otega's house and said, look, can we have that back please? It's worth a lot of money. So I, I gather he gave it back to them and explains why it didn't burn up coming into the atmosphere because it's really heat resistant. So naturally it made its all the way all the way down into Mr. Otega's house. And uh, I didn't see any mention of compensation for the poor gentleman whose house was trashed by this piece of metal, but uh, it couldn't even put it on eBay because they took it back. Damn them. Anyway, so yeah, that's it. Falling skies, watch out. They're everywhere. Now, uh, Amazon, the company that reckons they're going to be delivering everything by drone, well, they've been running some drone delivery trials in California and they've cancelled them because, don't know, because drone delivery, like flying taxis, isn't a thing and it won't be for quite some time, but they've cancelled their California trials and they've moved to Arizona. Maybe their sinuses were clogged, I don't know. So they're going to be doing the trials in Arizona now. Maybe it's just that Arizona is more sparsely populated. So when their drones, I'm not saying if, I'm saying when their drones fall from the sky, because they have already, um, there's less likelihood that someone will be killed by the falling delivery drone. So makes sense, doesn't it? But really, um, yeah, no, not a good idea. Uh, okay, so yeah. Now, in France, they're having the Olympic Games. I think it's this year, isn't it? Olympic Games. And with all this going on, this terror stuff in the Middle East, and that a little bit concerned that terrorists might use drones as a weapon of mass destruction at one of the events. So they've got themselves a big arsenal of counter UAS gear, including 
anti-drone guns. And, oh, these things, <laughs> anti-drone guns. So they went out and they tested them and guess what? It didn't really work. <laughs> Governments are great. They'll spend so much money on crap and they'll take things at face value and when it doesn't work, the taxpayers left paying the bill. So yeah, apparently these, these anti-drone guns, not that flash, don't do the job particularly well. So they're gonna have to come up with a new idea. What a shame. They look so cool though. They look so cool. But no, again, a bunch of people who can't get a real job duped by people who have got some pretty impressive 3D renderings and brochures. That's what happens in this industry. Now, um, I want to talk a bit about, this is an important, very serious subject now. Uh, I've been going on about safety. A lot of the stuff I talk about safety because we've got to maintain our reputation for being totally safe and never in the history of mankind anywhere on the face of the planet has anybody died as the result of the recreational use of a multi roach drone. Important to remember that. That's still true as of the time I make this video. So we need to look at safety. We need to make sure we preserve that record. And I often, well not often, but I have been criticized a couple of times by bringing up accidents and incidents in the manned aviation sector. Oh, this should be about drones. Don't talk about manned aircraft. We don't want to know. Yeah, you do. Because we need to remind people where the real dangers lie. Remember? Like this. Um, it's not us. It's not the drones we fly. It's not the model aircraft we fly. It is manned aviation. That's where all the problems are going on. And in the USA, the FAA has some real problems. For a start, we had the Boeing incident. We've been over that. We know that. It's bits of Boeing fall off, off things. The FAA basically said, We've got way too much coffee and donuts to get through to actually certify your aircraft. Why don't you do it yourself? Oh, that was a recipe for disaster from the get-go, wasn't it? So they're addressing that, apparently, addressing that. And there's more whistleblowers and things coming out of the woodwork. But there's a bigger problem now, a much bigger problem. And if you watch the Blanc Alerio channel, which is Juan Brown, who is actually a US airline captain, he flies passenger jets in America. So he should know what he's talking about. And he's, he's a really clever guy, he's skilled up. He does some really great video presentations on manned aviation incidents. And he did a video this week in which he said something very, very worrying. He said basically it's, it's really only a matter of time until there's a major tragedy at an American airport. Why is that? Well, because we've had an ongoing stream of near misses at airports. Aircraft having to abandon takeoffs because other aircraft have crossed a, crossed a runway. In fact, in one recent one, four aircraft were crossing a runway and the air traffic control gave another airliner the clearance to take off down that same runway. My goodness, how many people would have died if, the, if the, they hadn't recognized what was going on and aborted the takeoff? It's, 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 a, it's unbelievable. And this is happening on a regular and ever increasing frequency. This has been going on since the beginning of the year. And the frequency is increasing. Another one just, I think it was today, I, I saw, and I'll put a link to these things in the description if I recall, um, a, a light aircraft crossing a runway in front of a passenger taking off and the takeoff had to be aborted. I mean, this is happening on a daily basis. And as Juan says, eventually, you know, luck will not be on the side of the people involved and there will be a tragedy. Now, this is something that's supposed to be administered by the FAA, just like Boeing's certification. The FAA is supposed to be in control, administering, making sure the skies and the airports and everything else are safe, making sure the air, air traffic is safe. And they're failing. They're failing abysmally. But they've got a solution. The FAA, they've come around. They... To prove that they know what they're doing, the FAA has come up with a program. Uh, uh, this is it. Drone Safety Day. Yes, while Boeings are falling apart, while aircraft are missing each other by this much on runways loaded with hundreds of people, the FAA is putting its time, effort, resources and money into Drone Safety Day because drones aren't safe. Well, I think we've proven they are, but no, let's ignore all the real risks that you're more likely to be hit by a piece of falling airliner or you're more likely to be you know, badly injured or maybe even killed in, in an incident at an American airport because of air traffic control shortcomings. Yeah, well, forget that. Don't worry about that. Don't worry, don't sweat the big things. We're focusing on the little details, the things that don't matter. FAA, you should be ashamed. And remote ID, how much time, money and effort have you spent on remote ID when you've got all this going on at the airports. I'm sorry, but I have to give them a real big telling off for this. And I don't think it's unreasonable. I don't think it's unreasonable at all. We are working very hard to maintain our record of safety. What's the FAA doing? It doesn't look like they're doing very much. There's nothing effective. And they should be hauled over the coals for that. They should be held to account. It's not good enough, it really isn't. Get, get um, Kevin Morrison there at the air traffic control centre. Get him to sort them out. He'll, he'll comb his hair and have a glint in his eye. He'll know what to do. He's He's really good with drones, isn't he? <laughs> anyway, what else have I got on my little list of things here? Um, if you live in Australia, 
And apparently some people do, as I've said before, some people do live in Australia, whether by choice or not, whether they're just escaped convicts, we don't know. But if you live in Australia, CASA has a survey um, underway. They've commissioned a company to do a survey about drones and things. It was in the latest CASA drone newsletter. If you get that, you'll know about it. If you don't get that, then I have a link to it down there, and you can go and click on that and have your say. No guarantees you'll be listened to, no guarantees anything you say will make any difference, but at least you'll have had a go. You'll have given it a bit of a go, and that's important. If you don't participate, you can't complain. But I just wish we had better results from these surveys. They don't always really you know, listen, do they? Never mind. So that's it. That's another little burst of news. And, um, oh, no, not quite. One more thing. ADSB alarm. Now, I put a community tab posting up inviting people to apply for a beta tester. Um, because I want to get any of the remaining little bugs that I don't know about identified and fixed before I throw this out to the, the great masses because uh, if you have like 10 people reporting a bug, it's a lot easier than having a thousand people reporting a bug. So, uh, and I want to do up an FAQ that people are going to have questions that, that they have about installing and running this whole thing. I want to be able to put, the, put that in a web page so that people can actually, don't have to contact me, they can just read the web page for all the, the common problems you might encounter. So I put a thing on my community tab and I've had quite a few responses. A lot of people at or near big airports, which actually is not the best place to be to test this because you're not going to be flying your drone or model aircraft at or near a big airport. It doesn't happen. So I'm looking more for people who are in a an area where there's a, a, a small but perhaps regular number of aircraft flying around. Um, aircraft perhaps flying overhead at high altitude uh, because they will be ghosted by the system. They won't be reported because they're not a danger. And aircraft, like light aircraft that are flying lower and around within, you know, maybe um, two, three, four, five, ten miles so that we can, you can use the system, test it out. Now, if you want to be a beta tester, um, go down to the commenty bit by my man parts, leave a little message, sell yourself. Why should I pick you? And if you've got a Raspberry Pi and an RTL SDK USB software to find radio dongly thing, um, then that's all you need. It's all you need to do the testing. And what I'll do is I will uh, put up an image file of the SD card. You can download it, put it in your um, Raspberry Pi, and then run it and tell me what you see. Um, if you've got an Android phone, that'll be useful too, because I do have an app, which I'll be putting up in a, a few days afterwards, um, which enables you to set the GPS coordinates and uh, the range of the alarms and so forth. Uh, in the meantime, you can, if, if you know a little bit of Python programming, a little bit of Python, which is again, another helpful thing, because most of the code is written in Python, you'll be able to set those settings manually if you want to. Otherwise, um, you'll have to wait for the app to come out. But anyway, that's basically what I'm saying. So that is very close. I've got my new server up and running. Yay! I'm just waiting for a security audit because when you connect a computer to the internet and you invite people to come and download stuff off it, you know that bad people are going to come along and try and exploit any little crack in the armor and put their Bitcoin mining stuff on there and, and try and steal data. So I'm getting an independent third party to make sure I've set the firewall up properly and all the permissions are dead right because I don't want to have to waste my time dealing with evil little sods with their little scripts that want to attack things that I'm doing. So I'll get someone else to do that for me. Right. That is it. That's an end to it. Um, I think we will leave with that same footage that we came in with because I think that is spectacular. And I think everyone who's thinking of investing in pilotless air taxis should look at this and think again. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye for now. Overregulation is like a tumor. It's killing a hobby. It must be terminated. Now!